Welcome to Friday's edition of Renew. I'm Pastor Tony Cowan. Thanks for joining us and let's get right to the point today. We are talking about the goodness of God, the fact, the reality that God, our Heavenly Father, is good and He wants to do good in our life. Every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights. If it's evil, it did not come from above. It did not come from God. It did not come from our Father. It came from the thief who wants to steal, kill, and to destroy. And see, again, we need to make that distinction. We need to separate, just like God separated the light from the darkness to begin with in, the, in Genesis 1, we need to separate in our own mind good and evil. If it's evil, if it's destructive, if it's stealing, killing, destroying, it did not proceed from God, did not come from above. It's not a good and perfect gift. And God wants us to resist that. But He wants us to receive His good provision that He has waiting for us. It's God's perfect will that we enjoy His life to the point that it's overflowing in our life. That is God's will for us. And Jesus taught on this in Matthew 7, we looked at yesterday, the simplicity of prayer. You know, God doesn't want us to deal with Him according to rules, regulations, red tape, bureaucracy, you know, as an outsider, You're dealing with a coal corporation. He wants us to deal with Him as our Heavenly Father. He wants to deal with us as His very own children, as His sons and daughters. And it says, Jesus went on to say there in verse 11, if us being evil compared to Him know how to give good things to our children, how much more does our Heavenly Father know how to give good things to us who ask Him? We're going to look at some other scriptures regarding prayer today found in Philippians chapter 4. Philippians 4 and verse number 6. It says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. See, it's not God's will that we take upon ourselves the burden for our own provision. We need to look to Him to be our provider. In fact, the fact that He wants us to know Him as Father he wants us to call Him Father, means that He takes on the role of a Father, a provider, a good, a good provider, our source of supply. He wants us to look to Him for everything. A lot of people think, well, we, I don't need to bother God with such small, trivial things. He's got a universe to operate. God can handle it. He wants us not to be careful for anything. He says, be anxious for no thing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. He wants us to come and ask. He wants us to look to Him for our source of supply for every need, big, medium, and small, all right? He doesn't want us to be careful about anything. And then notice in verse 7, it says, And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Not only do we get rid of the worry, the fear, the anxiety, when we go to God and we look to God to be our provider as our Heavenly Father, but notice that also we receive the peace of God. The peace of God that passes all understanding. In other words, it's an over your head peace. Now why is that? Because we have a God who is an over your head good God. Amen. He wants to do over your head good things in your life. He wants to provide for you in a way that you can't even provide for yourself. And so when we come to Him, when we ask we ask our Father, our Provider, trusting in Him to meet our needs. Notice that we receive His peace. It's a peace that passes all understanding and it guards our hearts and minds. In other words, it doesn't allow those fearful thoughts, those fiery darts that the enemy is trying to fire at you to get and enter into your heart and cause anxiety, fears, and worries into your life, cause you to lose sleep and all those kind of things. No, God doesn't want you living a life like that. He wants you to live in your life with Him, walking with Him, walking in His peace, the peace that passes all understanding. Now notice there's something we have to do in order to maintain that peace that we receive from Him. In verse number 8, it says, Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, listen, whatever things are of good report, if there's any virtue, if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate or think on those things. You see, that's the way peace is maintained in our life. It's when we decide to think on the good things, the good report. Think on the good things of God. Right in the middle of bad things going on, we can decide to think on the good things. The fact that God is doing good in my life, He's working things together for my good, He's turning all things around for my own good, 
and he's bringing good and perfect gifts into my life. See, when I start thinking on that, that's what causes the peace of God that passes all understanding to be maintained in my life. Now, it takes effort. It takes it takes diligent effort on your part to do that because there's all kinds of thoughts and imaginations and worries and fears trying to gain entrance into your mind and into your heart. But we maintain the peace of God that shields and guards those things, keeps those out by thinking on the right things, thinking on the good things of God, thinking on His Word. Isaiah chapter 26 and verse 3 tells us that He will keep us in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on Him. See, thinking on the good things is really thinking on God. It's thinking His, his thoughts. It's keeping His thoughts in our mind. And again, we have to separate the evil thoughts from the bad thoughts. The evil, tho or evil thoughts from the good thoughts. The good thoughts from what is evil. Think on the good things. Think on God's Word. Meditate and think on Him, on how good your Heavenly Father is. And in doing so, you will maintain that peace that will guard your heart and mind. You will keep yourself from worrying and spending your days, you know, worrying and in fear and discouraged about everything. Well, that's all the time I've got for today. Join us again next week for other subjects. And uh, if you'd like additional resources and materials, go to TonyCowan.org. We'll see you next week.